This episode of the AT Tips Cast is sponsored by Text Help Systems, provider of award-winning literacy solutions, including Read and Write Gold and Fluency Tutor. For more information, go to www.texthelp.com. That's www.texthelp.com. Welcome to the AT Tips Cast, exploring and investigating the implementation of assistive technology in public schools. I'm your host, Chris Bouguet. This is episode number 56, recorded on May 17, 2010. This is part two of an examination of some free yet useful strategies to help students practice keyboarding. Let's take a look at AT Tips number 92 through 97, More Strategies to Help with Keyboarding. I feel the need for typing speed. Who doesn't like a good race? Competition is fun and motivating. If you know a student who needs to practice his keyboarding skills and is motivated by competition, then AT tip number 92, play.typeracer.com, is the website for him. When you first log on to the website, a box pops up on the screen asking you to create an account. It is free to create an account, but you don't have to. Just close the box that appears on the screen to race as a guest. From here, you have three options. You can enter into a typing race to race against others, you can practice typing on your own, or you can race against friends in a private room. If you choose the first option, you are entered into a race with other players. Visuals of little Volkswagen Beetles appear on the screen, each with a little name next to it. One of these Beetles is your car. Below the cars is a passage that needs to be typed. A traffic light and associated timer starting with 10 seconds and counting down begins to run. When the timer hits zero, the light turns green and away you go. You type in the passage as fast as you can. Anytime you make an error, the area within which you are writing turns red and you need to make the correction before your car moves on. As you type, you race your car across the screen. When the race is over, you get a words per minute count for feedback. Another little fun feature is that the text you are typing are actual quotes from popular movies and books taken from Amazon.com, so they might sound familiar to you. If you find the other racers distracting, choose the practice option and just race against yourself. If you want to race against friends, choose the race your friends option. You'll be given a unique URL to give to your friends so they can join your race. In this way, classmates could all race against each other to vie for the fastest typist in the room. Just like TypeRacer, AT tip number 93, TypingWeb.com, has a pop-up box that appears when you click the Start Typing button that invites you to register. Registration is free and it allows you to track progress, qualify for a certificate of achievement, and access some job banks if you are looking for a job requiring typing skills. But if you don't want to register, no sweat. Just close the pop-up window. You can progress through the courses that include lessons on home row keys, top row keys, punctuation, and more. These courses are pretty standard keyboarding practice, similar to goodtyping.com mentioned in the previous episode. However, typingweb.com also features keyboarding games when you click on the Games tab at the top of the screen. Air Typer, Typing Ghosts, Type Revolution, Cup Stacking, and Crazy Keys are just a few of the games you can play. My favorite is typing ghosts, where these ghosts with words on them come flying at you. You have to type the words before the ghosts get too close to you. It's a bit challenging for new typists, but it's also kind of cool in a morbid, horrifying, evil sort of way. (laughs) One final web-based typing tutorial is AT tip number 94, Dance Mat Typing from the BBC. The website is www.bbc.co.uk slash schools slash typing. That's www.bbc.co.uk slash schools slash typing. Or, if that's too much to type, you can always get the link from the blog attipscast.wordpress.com. With dance mat typing, students follow step-by-step directions from a goat to learn how to type. It's really colorful and stimulating to look at. There are fun sound effects and prompts for when the student makes a mistake, like this. Type on me. 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 What's also cool about this site is that it has a non-flash version. So if you want, a student could have a text-only experience without the graphics. It is nice to have the option so you can differentiate the experience based on the student's needs. 
That is, if a student gets too distracted by all the graphics, you can roll with the text-based version, but this way, the student will still be using the same website as all the other students. Finally, to me, one of the best ways to practice keyboarding is to do it authentically. That means give the students a reason to keyboard above and beyond just practicing for the sake of practice. So, one authentic way to practice keyboarding is to instant message with friends and family. If a family has a computer at home with internet access, the family could set up a weekly Let's Talk to Uncle Mike night. Don't have an Uncle Mike? No worries. Any trusted family member or family friend will do. Instant messaging is a really fun, engaging, and authentic way to practice typing. It means more to practice when you know there's someone else on the other side you're trying to converse with. There are tons of free instant messaging services available, including the instant messaging services on Yahoo, Google, AOL, Facebook, and so on. We'll call instant messaging for keyboarding practice AT tip number 95. And that about wraps up our look at strategies to assist with keyboarding. Hey, wait a sec. What about keyboard accessibility? Aren't you going to give people ideas about how to make a standard keyboard more accessible? Well, I guess, sure. Well, like what? Well, you can take regular sticker paper and print out letters in a larger font or in different colors. Then you can cut out those letters and stick them on the keyboard. A larger font size might make the keyboard easier to see, and colors could be used to highlight different letters, like vowels or the letters in the student's name. You know, students could help make those stickers and help fasten them on the keyboard themselves. In this way, they'd have more ownership when it comes time to use them. Great idea, honey. Let's call that AT tip number 96, stickers for keyboard accessibility. Well, while you're at it, you know how the F and J keys have those raised bumps on them to help people know where to put their fingers for the home row keys? Well, that tactile feedback could be used on the other keys as well. So just like using colors for vowels or letters in a student's name, other tactile indicators could be placed on other keys. Small pieces of sandpaper could be put on some keys, or drips of glue, which would dry to cause bumps, would work as well to give the key some tactile feedback. Ooh, I like those ideas too. So let's call tactile feedback for keyboards AT tip number 97. Thanks, bud. Don't mention it. Anytime you need keyboarding help, I'm your gal. I'm sure there are even more strategies or websites to help with keyboarding out there that I failed to mention. So if you have a favorite that I missed, drop me a line at attipscast at gmail.com or leave a comment on the Facebook fan page. For those of you using the AT Tips Cast as a professional development initiative, the question booklets for Volume 8 are now available. Come on over to attipscast.wordpress.com and download the question booklets. If this is your first time hearing about this and you're wondering what's this all about, you can check out a special episode that describes the whole thing. It's nestled right in between episode 32 and 33. Finally, one quick announcement. Sally Norton Dar and I are presenting a workshop called Fun and Practical Strategies Using Assistive Technology with Students for the Virginia Society for Technology and Education, or VISTI for short, on Monday, May 24th, 2010 at 8 o'clock Eastern in Second Life. And one of the best things about this workshop is that it's free. So all you have to do is show up on Visti Island at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on May 24th, 2010, and we'll take care of the rest. We've got some fun virtual world activities planned to help you learn about some different strategies you can use with a variety of students. You can do a search for Visti Island, and I'm sure you'll find it. But I'll have a direct link on the blog, attipscast.wordpress.com, as well. If you're listening to this and you're like, what's Second Life? Don't fret. Second Life is a virtual world where you control an on-screen avatar. Participation is free, but you do need to install a viewer to your computer. You can learn everything you need to know from www.secondlife.com. Come check us out. We'd love to collaborate with you in Second Life. So, until next time, may all your interventions be inclusive and may all your strategies be supportive. <laughs>